<laughs> I did. I did. When I got home, I didn't even recognize my ankles and my feet. They were all swolled up because of the flight and the food. We had such a good time that at one point we were, we were walking down uh, somewhere in Portland. Uh, we were in Maine, Portland, Maine, not Oregon. But uh, we were walking down the street, and Amanda said, you've got something on your mask. And I looked, and it was chocolate sauce. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know you're having a good time when you get chocolate sauce on your mask. And so it was, uh, it was fabulous. Uh, you know, thank you guys for uh, allowing us uh, to step away for a week. It was much needed. It was a, a time of good refreshing. And then I watched uh, the service from last week. It was phenomenal. Mark did a great job. Let's give him a hand clap. <laughs> e everyone who participated in the service did uh, outstanding. And so I, I'm just so proud of uh, you guys and, and, you know, that we are able to continue ministry uh, even, you know, when some of us are absent. So that's a big thing for a church. And so... Uh, Again, it's, it's good to be back. You know, we've been uh, preaching a series on living mask-free, using a mask as a metaphor throughout pretty much the entire uh, summer. We've looked at uh, dropping the mask of anxiety, of fear, uh, of worry, of pride, judgmentalism, and now we're looking at how we, how we live, how we live with passion, how we live with truthfulness. And, and this morning we're going to look at how we live uh, with purpose. And uh, so this morning you're going to hear a lot uh, of good things. And I want to uh, open with Psalm chapter 118 and reading uh, from a couple uh, places here. First in verse 1, uh, it says this, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. And you're going to hear that a lot this morning, that God is good. And then down in verse 5 through 9 it says this, Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. And I think that's an important reminder for us, especially in an election season, that our hope does not rely in man, nor does it rely in princes, but it relies in God. And this morning you're going to hear a lot of stories of triumph. You're going to hear about the goodness of God. But we've gathered here together this morning around His throne of grace to celebrate what He's done for us. He has delivered us from distress. He has delivered us from struggle. And He has led us to a place of victory. And before we move forward any further in this service, I would like for us to begin with a word of prayer. So if you could bow your heads. Father, we thank You so much for this day, Lord Jesus. We thank You that You are good and that we can praise You and worship You and that we have liberty to come into Your house. And so, Father, I pray that Your anointing, let Your presence saturate our lives, saturate this place this morning. Lord Jesus, thank You for Your peace and for Your joy. Thank You, Father, that You have not abandoned us or forsaken us, but You are here with us. And so, Lord, our prayer this morning is that You would accept our worship, that we would experience your fullness of joy as we look into your beautiful face this morning. Lord, allow some of our discouragements, allow all of our discouragements and our failures, Lord, to dissipate, to disappear and give us newness of life this morning. Cause our hearts to leap within us, Lord Jesus, at the joy that you have given us. And so, Father, Thank you so much. It's in your name that we pray, Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, you guys are, are in for a treat this morning. Uh, I, I've asked my friend Tyler Cook to come and, and share briefly about what God has done in his life and what he's led Tyler to do in, in the city of Campbellsville. Uh, Tyler, and I don't want to steal any of his thunder, but... He, he's opening up a sober living home in Campbellsville. And I, just a word, I met Tyler a few years ago, 
Uh, and, and him and I immediately connected, right? Tyler is one of those guys that, that is serious about uh, changing people's lives. And he come through Campbellsville University, barbering school. He's an excellent barber. I highly recommend. What's the name of your barber shop in Campbellsville? On Point Barbering. So, so if you want to look like Ashton or me, go see Tyler, right? So, so anyway, and, and he's got a heart for those who are suffering in addiction. And uh, Tyler's going to share his story, and then after that we're going to pray for him and then move on with our service. But Tyler, if you want to come up, please. Thank you all. Good morning. Good morning. I'm grateful to be here. And, uh, you know, I, I, I speak sometimes, but not necessarily in this setting, so uh, I might be a little nervous, but I, we should get through it all right. Uh, Jason, I appreciate that, that welcome, man. And, uh, You've been an inspiration to me and so many other people, man, and uh, I'm just grateful to see what God has done in your life and what he uh, continues to do and all the people you touch and help. And, uh, you know, another person I want to mention is my, my fiance over here, Heather, man. I couldn't do uh, none of the stuff that I do without her. I couldn't got through barber school. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be out where, I was at, where I'm at today without her. And uh, she's, you know, the, the other half to me and the other half to this sober living house. So, you know, uh, she needs to get a lot of recognition uh, as well. And, and it's not about recognition anyway. It's just about helping you know, helping the guys that have, seen, have been through some of the struggles like me and Jason have. And, uh, you know, I won't take too much of your time about, uh, you know, my, my journey through addiction, you know, but it led me to, to, to homelessness and, and sleeping under bridges and sleeping outside and, and you know, eventually suicidal. And on no, November the 1st of 2016, uh, I ended up on the north, uh, excuse, the, the northwest corner of 2nd and Main Street in Louisville, Kentucky. If you know much about Louisville, that's right where the, the KFC Yum Center is. And on 2nd Street, you know, if you go around the corner, there's a bridge. And, you know, the best that I could come up with at, th at this point in my life, you know, been through so much, so, so just depressed, so down and out, uh, didn't see no light, didn't see no way out. The best that I could come up with was to, to get on that bridge and jump off. You know, and that's how far the, down the scale that I've gone, that I've gone in my addiction and in my life, and you know, I come from being a respected, sober member of, of my community. You know, I worked, uh, I did the things a father should do. I worked, I paid my bills, and you know, I, I did all this stuff that you know we're supposed to do as adults and uh, contributing members of society. And it had led me that far down to sleeping under bridges and and, and wanting to kill myself. But you know, through a series of events, uh, Jesus Christ stepped in. God stepped in, and uh, you know. Uh, that day, a, a person had happened to be two blocks over, called my cell phone. I went to get in the car with them. I went home and slept. The next day, my probation officer called me because I'd, I'd been in some trouble. So, you know, uh, uh, she called me to come in. The next thing I know, I'm in, I'm in jail. The next, a few days later, I'm in Campbellsville, Kentucky. Uh, God placed me in Campbellsville, Kentucky. There's no doubt in my mind uh, that that's where I was, I'm supposed to be. And, uh, you know, I'm truly grateful for that. Uh, you know, I ended up in the facility in Campbellsville. A lot of y'all are probably familiar with the healing place. And, you know, the very first thing that I, I did, because I had been sober before, but I knew that, that, that the, the, the principles and the, the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous had worked. But no matter how you cut, you know, I don't know how y'all feel about the 12 steps, but no matter how you, how you slice it up and look at it, it's all about God. So the very first thing that I had to do when I got to Campbellsville was get on my knees and start to, you know, reaching out to God and seeking God. And, uh, you know, my life started to change dramatically. Within a, within a couple of days, you know, uh, so uh, I went through that program. I, I, I was in this, this particular uh, uh, room right here is uh, where, where I found my love for, you know, Christian music, gospel music. This is one of the places where I felt the Holy Spirit at uh, uh, years ago, probably early 2017. Another church that I attended, uh, you know, I, I, I found a love for that music and I, and, and I felt the Holy Spirit. And, you know, so, so my life the last few years has been, uh, you know, has been some amazing things has happened to me. And it, it's all, you know, all glory be to God. Um, you know, through that facility, I went on and worked there. And here's a, a quick story, man. And this is no, there's no doubt in my mind that, that God is real and, and God will, will, you know, will show up right when he's supposed to. Because I was in that facility. Uh, I knew how to do a lot of different things, but I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. You know, I knew how to do a few things. I didn't want to go back home. Uh, 
and something that, that I had been interested in. I never had thought about a career or anything, but I liked, you know, haircuts and hairstyle, nice hair like Jason's. Uh, I liked, uh, you know, I, I liked that, and, and I liked the process of it, but, uh, you know, I, I never thought that it was something that I would do or, 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 or you know, that, that was even a possibility for me. But the, the further I got in that program, and, uh, you know, I bought me some clippers, and I, I you know, I started cutting people's hair and messing people's hair up, and uh, people was making fun of me, making fun of their haircuts, and, uh, uh, but I just kept working at it every chance I got. I, I was watching videos on uh, how to cut hair. But long story short, uh, I've been praying for God to just show me what to do. I, I thought about barber school, but there, was, there wasn't a school anywhere within, you know, 50, 60 miles or so. You know, we're way down here in Camas. There wasn't a school around. But I just kept praying and kept praying about it. And uh, one day, uh, a man and a woman walked to the front door. It was Mr. Jason and I think Bootsy. Well, they walked through the front door of this place where I was at, and uh, they said that uh, we're opening a barber school right across the street in Campbellsville, Kentucky, from the place I was in. So there's no doubt in my mind, you know, all that prayer and, and, and God asking God to show me what he wanted me to do, man, there's no doubt that uh, that was divine intervention. You can't tell me any different. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I went to barber school, and at some point in this process, I met Heather, and, uh, you know, we hit it off, and we've been together for a, f a few years now. And, uh, you know, I, I went through barber school, and, uh, you know, these things, good things started happening in my life. And I, I'm attending church, and I was helping people. And my, my you know, the, a principle of, of the 12 steps, and, and, and to me, it's just the, the teachings of Jesus Christ was brotherly love. You know, I was, I was loving on my brothers and trying to help people every chance I could. And, uh, you know, it's not about me. It's about everybody else. Uh, book, another book that I read says... Uh, you know, our, our main purpose in life is about how we can serve God and the others about us, uh, the fellows about us. So that's been one of the missions that, that I've been on. And, and, and through that, you know, it keeps me sober. And, uh, but, you know, I went through barber school and I, and I, I started getting better and, and gradually getting better. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, eventually we finished that. And, uh, I guess sometime when we was at a, 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 the show in Nashville, the, the barber show in Nashville, I proposed to Heather. That was in uh, April of 2018, so we've been engaged ever since then. And Heather, she's the nurse at the healing place. And I don't think that she ever thought that she would be in the field of recovery or dealing with addiction. She just loved helping people, you know, that was her passion, you know, that, that instinct, the motherly instinct just to help people. And uh, she got the job out there at the healing place, and through that she's got a lot of other uh, responsibilities, but uh, I think she found where she was supposed to be at and, and her love for people in recovery and just uh, you know helping those guys you know a lot of people look down on on people like me and jason and uh, you know people uh, that, that suffer but you know some of the best people that i've ever met and uh, you know but to make a long story short you know i i went through barber school i graduated and i was fortunate enough uh, to be able to open a barber shop on main street uh, here in campbellsville and uh, you know in and of myself and of my own devices, you know, that wasn't possible. I come from uh, sleeping under bridges in Louisville, Kentucky, to wanting to, to jump off that bridge to, to, you know, from jails and institutions and death, man, to owning a, a barber shop on Main Street, man. And, uh, you know, I'm just truly grateful and truly, truly humbled by that, man. And uh, I know that, that none of this would be possible without God and my, my surrendering of my will and, uh, you know, turning over my, my actions and my, my, my life to God. And, you know, I'm just truly grateful for that, people like Jason and Heather and all you people. Um, so through this pro, you know, the last year has been rough. I think everybody's had probably a rough 2020. Uh, it's been rough on everybody, but, uh, you know, I had an older brother that on Mar uh, excuse me, February was president's day of this year. I can't remember the exact date, but my brother Scott was 40 years old and he, we lost him this year to this disease, you know, uh, overdose. I'm not sure if it was heroin, fentanyl, what it was, but I, I know he probably had both in his system, but we lost him to this, uh, disease and you know there's not only him we've lost so many other people i bet i've known 20 people in the last uh, two years to you know lost them to, due to this disease and uh, you know something that i was wanting to do a while back and heather was on board with it was uh you know open a place for these men to go you know she's tied in with the healing place and a problem that we identified was there wasn't uh, many places for these people to go if any place for them to go you know, when they got out of treatment, you know, a problem is a lot of people don't have nowhere to go. They go back to the same hometown, the same surroundings, the same environment, and they continue to do the same thing. They fall right back into that, uh, that cycle of addiction. So, you know, after three years of uh, trying to find a place 
where we could uh, uh, make this home possible, we finally uh, uh, come across a guy who, who was willing to work with us. So uh, in honor of my brother that we lost, we named the home Scott Summit of Hope. Uh, you know, Scott, it's not necessarily just for Scott. We named it after him, but it represents uh, so many people that we've lost. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure everybody in this room is probably touched by addiction and alcoholism in some way or another. You know, have a family member or, or a child or something. But anyway, so we've been fortunate enough to, to have this home. Uh, like I said, we've named it, named it Scott Summit of Hope, and it's been a, a labor of love. It's been a lot of work. We've had a lot of, uh, a lot of help, but we're just truly grateful to to be able to give these guys a stepping stone back into society. You know, they're going from treatment into a, a structured home. You know, this home is structured. It's not just you come and go as you please and, uh, you know, a free for all and do what you want whenever. You know, they're going from, from this place to another safe, sober environment, you know, uh, with, with some guidelines and structure, maybe a little more freedom than they was used to before. But, you know, it just makes them feel at home, it makes them feel like they have their own place, their own kitchen, their own bathroom their own bedroom, you know, a couple of guys have to share a room, but they're nice sized rooms. And, uh, you know, it's just something that, uh, you know, we felt was, was needed in the community. And uh, hopefully there'll be an opportunity to, to do some more, but we're really fortunate, man, to the group of guys that, that we have there already, man, they're just good guys. And uh, uh, we're just truly, truly blessed. And our family's been blessed. And, uh, you know, I, I wasn't gonna read any scripture cause I'm not, uh, I don't, memorize a lot of scripture and I don't know that but I told Jason a while ago I asked him if he was expecting me to read any scripture and uh, uh, I, I wasn't going to but I, I couldn't help it because this morning I opened my Bible and I didn't know what I wanted to read and then I pulled up out here and y'all the sign says uh, just what does it say just the uh, love what's it say watch over one another. just watch over one another care for one another something like that well when I opened my Bible this morning it turned me to Daniel 4:27. it says therefore your majesty be pleased to accept my advice, renounce your sins by doing what is right, and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed. It may be, it may be then your prosperity. So uh, that hit me this morning, you know, if, if we would all just be kind and love one another and, uh, you know, just do the next right thing. You know, life's real simple. You know, we don't know what to do. You know, we don't know what God's will for is us, but I, I learned a long time ago to keep it simple and just do the next right thing, and you can't be doing, uh, can't be doing wrong. So this home is a... Uh, uh, something you know in, in memory of my brother but so many other people and I'm just uh, truly grateful to be in the position like I said none of, none of what I've been through would be possible uh, uh, without the divine intervention and, and people like Jason and Heather and all you people and uh, you know probation and parole I'm not confused that God works through people you know uh, uh, the times that I've been locked up and my probation officers and things like that you know everything happens for a reason when it's supposed to happen and uh, you know when I was at that bridge ready to to, to, to jump off, you know, I know that that person uh, wasn't two blocks up the road in downtown Louisville calling me at that exact moment for, for no reason at all. So, you know, everything is, uh, you know, er everything happens for a reason, man, and I'm just uh, just truly grateful and uh, truly grateful for Heather, man, and uh, I wouldn't have been able to do anything that, uh, that I'm doing now without her, and uh, I don't know anything else I could say, but I'm just grateful for Jason inviting us to come and, uh, you know, uh, CR that, that's held here. I remember I loved coming to CR when I was uh, in a position where I could come. You know, I loved the music. I remember the first full song I ever learned was, uh, uh, I can't think of it right now, but the first full song I ever learned was on this screen right here. And uh, uh, I just love this place and love what y'all are doing. I love Jason. And uh, uh, I thank y'all. Thanks for allowing me to come share. And that's all I got. really on the front lines. This is uh, a front lines ministry. And uh, when I, Tyler asked me to go to Scott Summit of Hope and to pray over the place and bless it. And, and while I was there, I, I felt, you know, just uh, the moving of the Holy Spirit to, to, to not only bless it, but to invite Tyler to come and share his story and also to serve as a spiritual covering for the ministry there. So I know that here at Asbury, we're, we are so connected to seeing people's lives change, to seeing the least and the outcast and the broken and the rejected come to know Christ. And so I think what Tyler and Heather and, and, and the family are doing aligns with our, our mission, which is Christ's mission, uh, to, to seek and to find and save 
the lost. And so uh, as you're leaving here today, we're about to pray for Tyler and his family, but there is a, a collection plate in the back next to the offering plate, which I do want to say we've not passed around an offering plate here since probably around May 4th or May 10th, and giving is actually up this year than last year. So we may never pass a plate again. So that's... that's <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that's a credit to your faithfulness and to what God is doing in you. But also there's a, a gift basket to bless Tyler uh, as they do this. They're going out on a limb, right? There's no insurance backing. Uh, and currently there's no ch church that's uh, partnered with them. And so I think there's an opportunity there for Asbury to come alongside and say, hey, we'll be that spiritual covering for you. We'll cover you in prayers and support and encourage you. So I'd like to ask Tyler and Heather and, and, and your children, if you guys will come up, I'd like to pray for you all. And I'd like to ask if uh, Leslie, Grant, Regina, and Mark, any others, if you want to come and, and lay hands as we pray over them. And as these guys, you know, this is, uh, the enemy doesn't like this type of ministry, right? He doesn't like this type of ministry when you're telling people that Jesus loves them and that he can heal them and set them free. And so we just want to pray for you guys this morning. And we're going to use some oil here. This is symbolic of the work of the Holy Spirit in your lives. And it's here with us at service this morning. And so, Father, I pray right now for Tyler in the name of Jesus. And I pray for Heather, Lord, and these children. Father, watch over them in your name, Jesus. Surround them with your presence. Lord, I thank you for giving them a heart that uh, desires what you desire, Lord. And that's to see people saved, to see those who are broken and, and rejected, thinks that nobody loves them, Lord, that you do love them. For you so love the whole world that you gave your only begotten Son. And so, Lord, I thank you for giving this family that heart to show your love to the outcast. And Father, we pray that you absolutely protect them, that you anoint them in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you surround them with your loving presence, Father, and that you would fight their battles for them. We pray that Scott's Summit of Hope will be a refuge in you, Jesus, that lost and lonely men will come there and be connected to you and to brought into your presence, Father. We pray that you surround that place with angels, Lord, to do battle on your behalf. Father, we pray for the souls of those men that would come in there, Lord, that you would radically change their hearts change their lives, let them step out of that addiction and cause them to be good godly men, good godly fathers to their families, Lord Jesus. We thank you because this ministry, this work is making a difference in our community and in our world. And Father, bless them. Bless this family in the name of Jesus. Father, give them the desires of their heart, Lord, and protect them from evil and lift up a hedge against the enemy that would ever, whenever come against them, Father, that you would fight on their behalves. And Lord, that you would absolutely saturate their lives with good things because you are a good God. So Lord, we thank you for these things. May they be done in your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. If everybody would stand and worship the Lord this morning. I'm going to start out with a, a hymn that everybody knows. It's 195 actually in your hymnal if you don't know it. But help me out. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. And let's just uh, give all of our worship and all of our attention to the Lord this morning. What can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. How precious is the flow that makes me white and found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It's not of good that I have done. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. How oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. There's no other the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And this is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. How oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. There's no other but the blood of Jesus. No, nothing but the blood of Unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song, and I can hear it. It's one of deliverance. Oh, from all my enemies. Oh, till all my fears are gone. to fear. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, oh, you have chosen me, oh, your love has called my name, oh, yes, it did, and I've been born again into your family, oh, your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child 
of God. Oh, yes, I am. See, I'm no longer a slave to fear. No, no, I am a child of God. Oh, 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 you split the sea so I could walk right through it. All my fears are drowned in perfect love. Could stand and say, I am a child of God. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. No, no, I am a child of God. Oh, sing it out. Say, I'm no longer a slave. To fear, I am a child of God, and I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Lord, I come, I confess that bowing here I find my rest. Because without you, Lord, I always fall apart. Because you're the one who kinds my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Yes, it is where grace is found. Lord, is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free, free indeed. And holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. You're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. So teach my song to rise to you and only you, Jesus. When temptation comes my way, and when I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. 
You're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. You're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. So, Father, thank you so much for your presence here this morning. Thank you for refreshing us, for reminding us where sin runs. washes away. It gives us newness of life. That you change us day by day. This word, Lord Jesus, anoint all of our ears. Walking among us right now, even as we are praying and even as we have of life into some people's ears this morning, Lord Jesus, I thank you for reawakening. breathing upon us and breathing upon this place, Lord, right now. We thank you for the opportunity to be called and gathered around your throne of grace this morning. So, Lord Jesus, we love you and we say thank you, thank you, thank you. In your name we pray. Chapter 18, Luke chapter 18, and I'll be preaching this morning on living with purpose, living with purpose, Uh, or if there was a second title to this sermon, it would be giving your life away in order to find it, and so I struggled back and forth with both titles Uh, We're going to go with living with purpose, but as a background, it's giving your life away to save it. And before we get to Luke 18, I want to read this from Matthew 10, verse 39. These are the words of Jesus. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What this means is that if you live life in a, in a selfish manner trying to, to hold on to it, you will lose it. But if you cling to Jesus, you will find it. Trying to appear as though something that we are not and how we live authentically and transparently and honestly with one another. This continues that theme. We've looked at how we live with passion, how we live live with purpose. How we live with purpose. And so to live mass free, we've got, and to live with purpose, we've got to let go of our life got to let go. And what does that even mean? Well, there's a story in Luke 18 that we'll look at this morning. Story of a rich young ruler. And he will be asked to let go by Jesus. Luke 18, picking up in verse 18. 
And a ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. And he said, All of these I have kept from my youth. Jesus heard this. He said to him, One thing you still lack. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. When he heard these things, he became very sad, for he was extremely rich. Jesus, seeing that he had become sad, said, How difficult is it for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard it said, then who can be saved? But he said, what is impossible with man is possible with God. And Peter said, see, we've left our homes and and followed you. And he said to them, truly, I say to you, there is no one who has left his house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who will not receive many times more in this time and in the age to come, eternal life. Four observations from our text this morning. Four things we're going to look at about purpose, about how we let our lives go. And the first thing that we notice is this. We have to let go of stuff that makes us happy. We have to let go of stuff that makes us happy. And we've got to realize that stuff actually does not make us happy. Sometimes we we think that it does, and then when we get that thing that we think makes us happy, we only want more of it, more and more and more. So we must realize that we've got to understand that stuff cannot make us happy. But what I want to draw our attention to also is this. This passage is not about God versus stuff. There's a difference. There's a difference because the rich young ruler, he's got his stuff, but he's holding it like this. He's got clenched fists. He doesn't want to let go. And what Jesus is saying, you've got to hold your stuff like this, with an open hand. With an open hand, but but the rich young ruler cannot do it. Instead, he when he hears Jesus say say this, he he drops his head and, and he walks away. What an opportunity! Imagine if he had just said, "Oh yeah, I get it, I'll do that." But he didn't. Drops his head and walks away. Notice also that, that Peter says, Hey, hey, Jesus, but, but what about us? We've, we've left families and, and homes as well. What, what, what are we going to get? And Jesus says this, very, very interesting. You'll be rewarded in this life and the life to come. But the rich young ruler doesn't get it. He, he, he walks away. And what the rich young ruler doesn't know is that if you trust God and hold on to the stuff that He gives you like this with, with an open hand, that, that you will find uh, eternal life. Uh, but he didn't notice that, and so he walks away and he resists the eternal life that Jesus is offering him. You see, the rich young ruler didn't hold possessions. His possessions held him. Question, what's holding you this morning? Our second point is this. We need to, first we need to remind her we need to live life open-handed, right? That, that, that God gives us the breath that we breathe. He gives us everything that we have and we live life open-handed. And second is this. We need to let go of, quote, it's, imper- it's possible. We need to let go of the idea that it's possible. Notice here that that Jesus asked him to give everything away and and to give to uh, the poor. And he walks away and Jesus says this. He says, it's hard to do this. 
It's hard to do this. And, and everyone then says, who, well, who can be saved? Here's what's going on. Back in the time of Jesus, if, if you were wealthy, if you were rich, it was seen as a blessing from God. It was indicative of the fact that, that God actually favored you and that He approved you. And so if you were wealthy, it was basically proof of the fact that you were accepted by God. And here is also what happens. We see later in the Gospels that Jesus goes into the temple, right? Uh, and he turns over the tables of the money changers. And what was going on there is that people would travel from all around, travel to Jerusalem to buy these animals to offer up their sacrifice, right? They would come with the, with the sacrifice. And what was going on, these money exchangers were actually corrupt people. And they were charging two, three, four, five, sometimes ten times more than what it actually cost to sell an animal. And what was desired was a, a spotless animal that was free from blemish. And so rich people could buy these animals. They had the means to buy the animal that was spotless and perfect. But the poor person didn't stand a chance. The poor person probably could save for six months and come to the temple and hear all of these greedy, corrupt money exchangers would just rob them blind and they were not able to buy an animal. Therefore, they were not able to make a sacrifice to God. So what the people are saying, they're saying, Jesus... If rich people, if it's impossible or hard for them to get in, then what hope do we have? And Jesus says, yeah, but what's impossible with man is possible with God. He's talking about faith. He's talking about salvation. And so we need to drop this idea that it's possible for us to save ourselves. Because we can and notice that Jesus recites the, the last five commandments when he's talking to this rich young ruler. And it's interesting, the last five commandments all deal with how we treat our neighbor. The first five are how we, our relationship with God. But these last five are how we deal with our neighbor. And Jesus lands on these and he points these out to the, the rich young ruler. And, and Jesus is signaling, he's sending him a message, right? And, and the ruler says, oh yeah, I've done all of those things. I've done all of it. Oh, yeah. Uh, never lie, cheat, and still honor my father and mother. I've done that since I was a boy, Jesus. It's interesting because Jesus could have said, really? He could have said, well, I seen when you were... When you were 14 and, and you didn't do what your mama asked you to do. Or, or I seen when you were uh, in school and, and you cheated on that test. Or I seen you do this or I seen you do that. But notice Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus doesn't do that. He says one thing you lack. The reason Jesus doesn't do that, because if he'd said that, the rich young ruler would have went out and tried to do all of those things better and, and do them over again. But that's not the point. The point is not about what you do. The point is about that one thing. The point is that it's impossible to save yourself. Being a good person doesn't get you into heaven. Scripture says that we've all sinned and we've all come short of the glory of God and that we all need a Savior. And it's only when you repent from your sin and turn to Jesus Christ in faith that you are forgiven. And so there's absolutely room for sanctification and obedience and good godly living. But we cannot save ourselves no matter how good you are, no matter how many church services you attend, no matter how much money you put in the offering plate despite all the charities in the world that you give money to you cannot be good enough to make it into heaven it takes perfection and there's only one that was perfect it was Jesus Christ and when we believe in him he covers us in his righteousness 
So that's what Jesus is saying right here. And also this, our lives are not defined by what's possible. Our lives should not be defined by what's possible because God can do the impossible. We should believe uh, in the impossible. And so when somebody comes and says, you can't recover from that. When somebody comes up and says, you can't be healed from that. When somebody says, you fought that demon for 20 plus years, there's no chance of recovery. We ought to be a people that says, oh, what did you say? What did you say? Wait just a minute, see what my God can do. Wait just a minute, see what God can do. I believe in the impossible. It's okay to clap your hands and uh, say amen if you agree with that. You say impossible, I say no, this is an opportunity for God. You say it's impossible to recover from drugs after you've been addicted for 17 years. I say wait just a minute and see what my God can do. We ought to be a people that believes in the impossible. Believe in the impossible. Tyler, believe in the impossible, brother. You're going to see guys and you've seen guys that come in and man, they think they don't have a hope in the world. And you and I and others have been there. But we know the God that we serve that can do the impossible. That situation that you are facing, do not doubt for a minute that God cannot move because He is able, He is capable, and He does the impossible. We serve a God that does the impossible. You say impossible we ought to be a people that says, whoa, wait a minute, this is an opportunity for God. The third thing, let go of the one thing, Matt. <laughs> let go of the one, this one's going to hit close to home, so get ready. This guy lacks more than one thing, right? Would you all agree? I would say it's safe to say that this guy is not perfect. I think it's safe to say that he lacks more than one thing, but Jesus focuses on that one thing. Have you ever talked to somebody and they say, yeah, I love God, but I got this one thing. Yeah, I love God, but, but when I get stressed, you know, I got this go-to. Yeah, I love God, but, 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 but when I'm facing pain, I got this one thing that I do. But there's this one thing. What's your one thing this morning? God wants that one thing that you, you hold on to. And as we're, we're speaking this, we know that, that one thing, we, we know what it is. God knows what it is. I don't have to speak it. When I said one thing, you immediately went to that one thing. And that's the one thing that God wants. If we're all honest, we've, we've got this one thing, right? This little thing that, that, that we say we, we hate sin, but sometimes we enjoy it. It's that, that one thing. And, and here's why we don't give God that one thing. We doubt that God is good. We believe Him with 99.9% .9 that He'll take away all of our fears and frustrations. But just in case, I've got this little secret that I, I kind of hold on to and, and pull out every now and then. And it gives me that solace. It gives me that comfort. It's my go-to. It's my fallback. It's my safety plan. We've got this little dialogue going on. And I mean, I preach, I'm preaching here, it preaches, and it starts here. And maybe, maybe this is landing elsewhere too this morning, but, but we've got this dialogue, right, that goes on and says, is God really that good? Is God really that good to take away your anxiety? Is He really that good to take away all of my pain? Is He really that good to take away all of my doubts? Is He really that good to take away all of my fears? Can I really trust Him enough 
to do it. Leads to our final point. At the beginning, notice that the ruler says, Good teacher. Calls Jesus a good teacher. And the story goes on, but that's the most important part of the story. Jesus is saying, you just called me God. But the, young, the young ruler doesn't get it. He, he, he misses it. He misses it. How many of us miss it? How many of us are here in the midst of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and we hear it week in and week out, but we doubt it. We hear that God is saying the cloud. Tell us that when we believe in Him, there is eternal life, that He is for us, that He is not against us, that with Him all things are possible. How many times do we hear that, yet we miss it and walk out of here? That's what happened with the rich young ruler. He, he misses it. Our fourth point is we need to let go of doubting that God is good. Church, we need to let go of doubting that God is good. We, 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 may, we may say, yeah, God is good, but, but sometimes you just got to let your hair down. We may say that God is good, but sometimes you got to get out there and mix it up a little bit. We may say, yeah, God is good, but I mean, come on, man. Sometimes you got to keep it real, you know. We need to drop that idea of thinking that or doubting that God is good. Uh, and so here's, here's the thing. We say God is good, but there are no, no buts there. If God is God, He is good all of the time, right? If God is God, He is good. When we say God is good, but we are committing heresy. <laughs> heresy. Because we cancel out everything that we said before. If God is God and He is, then He is good. Three ways in which God is good. Number one, God does good. Matthew 7, 11 says this, If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask Him. Number one, God is a gift giver. And number two is this, He turns bad things into good. Genesis 50, 20 says this, As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Joseph's brothers had sold him into slavery, but Joseph would end up being promoted to the second highest position in Egypt. And God would use uh, Joseph actually to save his people from a famine. The point is this, is that God is so good that he will take what the enemy has meant to destroy you, to kill you. He will turn it around and make the most beautiful, redemptive story that man has ever seen or heard. He's that good, folks. The third way in which God is good. He's so good that He will lead you by His goodness. Romans 2.4 says this, Nor do you presume on the riches of His kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance. God is so good that He will change your mind and the good news will set you free. The good news will help you say, I'm letting go of this one thing. I'm going to go all in, 100%, to where I can let go of this one thing. God is that good. Psalm 118.1, we'll read it again. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. The most secure life the most mask-free life, the life that lives is living with purpose is the life that lives in light of God's goodness. I'd like to ask Amanda to come, if she would, to the piano.
place in Scripture where it mentions one thing. Where one thing is mentioned. And it's in the book of Psalm. It's Psalm 27, verse 4. And this is David that's writing this. It says, one thing I have asked. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. What's your purpose? Above all else, it is this, to dwell in God's presence now and for the rest. How many of you this morning can say without a doubt that I am resting in God's presence now and will for all eternity. That's the most important decision. That decision in your life. If there's something you need to get right with God, today is the day of salvation. Don't ever trust the goodness of God. As we live life, we should live and forevermore starting right now. Father, I thank you so much for this service this morning. I thank you for your presence, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that we can trust you because you are saving us. That one thing. Give us the power, Lord, to live lives with the purpose of enjoying your presence now and for need a touch from you. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for breathing words of life. And we praise you in your name. We pray amen and amen. If you need prayer this morning, I'll meet you down here. I'll pray for you. But why don't we all stand and, and worship and make sure things are right between us and God this morning.